uh, that we're going to have with Union Civil Aviation Minister Mr. Jyotri Ditya Sindhya who's joining us this evening after the launch of uh, the newest uh, airline on the block uh, Akasa Air this uh, morning. Mr. Sindhya of course uh, flagged off uh, that first flight from Mumbai to Ahmedabad. Mr. Sindhya thank you so much for joining us exclusively on India Today sir. My first question to you of course is this is a momentous occasion this is historic. After eight years, a new airline has uh, been launched. Uh, what do you have to say about this moment, sir? After every dark night comes uh, a new dawn, uh, a new dawn with resplendent sunlight. And uh, the birth of a new uh, airline in India signifies that new dawn. As you mentioned, it's been eight years. Uh, since a new airline has been launched in India. Also keep in mind that the uh, civil aviation sector globally has gone through one of the toughest periods in the last decade, uh, especially in the last three years. Uh, in India, we've had uh, almost about seven airlines shutting down. Uh, and therefore, there has been a consolidation in the civil aviation sector. And therefore, the entry of a new airline really brings uh, forth the impetus and the opportunities in the civil aviation sector. So through you, I'd like to wish Akasa, which uh, uh, truly means uh, touch the skies, uh, all the very best, all the promoters, the CEO, Vinay Dube, and I do hope that they uh, will uh, meet customer satisfaction scores uh, and uh, make sure through meeting customer sat carve a market niche for themselves. They have extreme, uh, extremely aggressive expansion plans, 72 flights in the next five years. And I do hope with that they will touch the length and breadth of India uh, across multiple states. Right. So also the fact is this is expected to be a good year for Indian aviation. One new airline has already taken to the skies. One old airline is, of course, on its way to reviving itself for Jet Airways and is looking to take to the skies soon enough as well, possibly by the month of September itself. So this is finally, like you said, a new dawn, a good period, you would say, for the aviation sector. Well, let me give you the backdrop of that, Paul Ami. Uh, in 13-14, uh, we had six crore uh, travelers uh, on, uh, on uh, airlines. Uh, in 1920, which is the uh, last normal year, which is pre-COVID, we had 14.4 crores. So there's been almost close to a 250% increase in the uh, number of travelers uh, by air. Our forecast is by 2027, you're going to have close to 40 crore people traveling uh, by civil aviation. Now, just to give you a little bit of a backdrop in terms of our closest competitor, which is the railways, and I'm only gonna talk about that sliver of railways that travels by air condition, because let's not forget uh, an airliner is air conditioned. So I'm only gonna talk about first AC and second AC. Uh, we have close to 18 and a half crore travelers uh, by first AC and second AC in the railways. And so my, my inkling is that with a CAGR of 10.3% in civil aviation and a CAGR of only 5.6% in railways, uh, the time is not far when civil aviation will surpass the railways as a air-conditioned mode of transport. I'm not talking about the whole gamut of railways in terms of uh, third class and others, only air-conditioned class. I'm confident that we'll surpass that in the next four to five years and emerge as the bulwark of transportation in India. Also, the second point I'd like to add is uh, civil aviation is reaching hitherto untouched areas and remote areas in the country. Airports like Kushinagar, airports like Jharsuguda in uh, Orissa, airports like Deogar in Assam, Roop, uh, Deogar in, uh, in Jharkhand, Rupsi in Assam, Kishangarh in Rajasthan, which had no access to uh, civil aviation. They were off the civil aviation map. Today, uh, boast of numbers from 50,000 to 5 lakh travelers per year. That's the desire of people to travel. And why has that been possible? Point number three and my final point. It's been possible because the prime minister's uh, very clear intent of, in one word, democratizing civil aviation for India. 
उड़े देश का आम नागरिक हवाई चप्पल पहनने वाला भी हवाई जहाज में उड़े दैट वॉज अ ड्रीम फॉर अ लॉर्ड ऑफ पीपल इट्स बीन कन्वर्टेड इन टू रियालिटी बाय द प्राइम मिनिस्टर थ्रू अ वायबिलिटी गैप फंडिंग मॉडल वेर बी सेक्टर टेक्स ऑन द कॉस्ट ऑफ टिकट पार्शली एंड ओनली अ पार्शल कॉस्ट ऑफ दैट इज डिफ्रेड ऑन टू द कस्टमर विच हैज रिजल्टेड इन वन पॉइंट नाइन टू लैक फ्लाइट इन इंडिया दैट यू कुड नेवर ड्रीम ऑफ एंड वन करोड़ पैसेंजर्स हैव ट्रेवल बाय दोज फ्लाइट फ्रॉम टू थाउजेंड सिक्सटीन टिल ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी वन सो दैट्स द साइलेंट रेवल्यूशन दैट्स हैपनिंग इन द हिंटल एंड ऑफ इंडिया टूवर्ड सिविल एवियशन Right, sir. So you're talking about the fact that you would want more Indians to, of course, uh, you know, fly, make it affordable as well. But in terms of the ministry, and what sort of incentives and impetus are you offering so to prospective? Inclusivity, inclusivity, access, and affordability. Right. Right. Those are the three mantras that we live with. Of incentivizing prospective players. What are you doing as a ministry? Is the question that I'm asking in terms of incentivizing players to take the kind of risk that Rakesh Jhunjhunwala, Vinay Dubey, Aditya Ghosh have taken today, sir? So, if I may say this, uh, follow me. You are looking at uh, only one segment of the market. Civil aviation has a whole gamut of segments that one needs to look at. The first segment is international to domestic. The second segment is tier one domestic to tier one domestic. The third segment is tier one domestic to tier two, tier three domestic, and the fourth segment is tier two, tier three to the last mile. And therefore, Uran covers a international Uran covers domestic, not metro to metro, but metro to unserved, and it covers unserved to unserved airports. But there is another segment which is the last mile. which is a segment that i have been concentrating on over the last year and we have come up with a new policy called the small aircraft scheme which is all sub 20 seater aircraft cessna citations uh 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 what uh, water, water planes sea planes helicopters and through the sa scheme we have taken the uran scheme one step ahead which is not only a viability gap funding on a full plane load basis or a seat basis but also a viability gap funding in terms of the leasing cost of an aircraft that is the biggest impediment to uh, uh, to penetration at the grassroots level of small aircraft so we are looking at that part of the pie as well and in the current udan yojana of 4.2 which we have launched there has been a specific segment for helicopters as well as for small planes and you will see that sector taking off in the near future as well So this morning, when you, you were, of course, uh, flagging off that inaugural flight of Fukasa Air, you also mentioned about the fact that there were a couple of black swan events that hampered, uh, you know, as far as the, the aviation industry's uh, progress was concerned over the last couple of years. That, of course, including the pandemic, uh, that seems to be subsiding. Flyers seem to be back at the airports as well. But what about ATA fuel prices? A huge component of the operational cost Absolutely. of an airline. Absolutely. What are we doing Absolutely. about that? absolutely you're bang on uh, if you look at the uh, uh, the cost structure of an airline almost uh, 37 and a half to 40% of that cost structure is atf and look what's happened to atf it's gone from an average of roughly 53000 rupees a kiloliter in uh, 2019 uh, 20 to almost 1 lakh 41000 per kiloliter so there's been almost a 3x increase in the price of atf it has now reduced in the last week by almost uh, 16% to about 1 lakh 21000 uh, but that still is a 2x multiple of where it used to be right and therefore atf has become a 50% portion of an airline's cost structure which earlier used to be 40% because of the rise in atf prices so what we have done as a ministry is when i took over last year the first thing i did was look at the vat that is being charged on air turbine fuel and i personally wrote to 22 chief ministers we have uh, we had 12 states and union territories that were charging uh, a, a very small 1 to 4% as vat on atf but we had almost about 26 states and union territories that were charging between 20 to 30% vat so look at the multiplier effect on a cost basis for an airline and so i wrote to 22 chief ministers and i'm glad to report through your channel that 16 chief ministers have reduced vat on atf in their states 
from a burdensome 20 to 30 percent down to 1 to 4 percent. And through your channel, I'd like to thank all those chief ministers of the northeast uh, uh, states, whether it is Arunachal or Manipur or Tripura, right. of the hinterland, whether it is Uttar Pradesh, Madhya Pradesh, uh, Gujarat, uh, of hilly states like Uttarakhand and Himachal, uh, of union territories like Jammu and Kashmir and Ladakh and uh, Andaman and Nicobar and Lakshwadeep. Across the board, we've had that happen. And what has happened as a result of that? As a result of that, you've seen much more refueling happening in those states rather than the prohibitively in, uh, expensive states. There's been a rise of 360% in the case of Jammu and Kashmir. You've seen a rise in flights, in connectivity in many states uh, happening because of that. And okay. that's the multiplier effect that you're going to see. And if there's a rise in flights, there's an economic multiplier benefit and there is a, uh, a capital uh, multiplier benefit as well, which states will receive. Right, so I'm, I'm told that that's all the time that you have. But one final question, because I wouldn't be doing my job if I didn't ask you this question. So passengers have heard of many incidents and they've been reported across the media as well. Some action has been taken concerning airlines, certain mishaps as well. Uh, what would you like to tell the passengers today? How would you like to reassure them that flying is a safe option, sir? Well, let me say this, that first of all, uh, uh, this is an industry and a sector where reporting is not 99%, but reporting is 100%. Uh, every occurrence gets reported. Uh, there are uh, uh, always the case of some occurrences which are uh, in, a, uh, in a, an airline's control and some that are not. For example, bad weather is something that's not in an airline's control. A bird hit is not something that's in an airline's control and some things are in an airline's control. So the primary responsibility is the airlines for safety. But for me, safety is paramount and that's where the regulator in terms of DGCA comes in. Uh, and you have seen over the past few weeks, uh, a lot of steps have been taken uh, uh, and I'm very confident that through those steps, you're go you have already seen a lot of changes happen uh, uh, and I'm very confident that uh, through those steps, the confidence building has also happened uh, amongst uh, the airlines and the passengers. We need to work together to make sure that safety and security for our sector is paramount in terms of how we serve the customer. Right. Mr. Sindhya, thank you so much for that exclusive and that candid conversation, of course. Uh, congratulations to the ministry, to the regulator, and of course to Akasa Air for its debut today. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much for speaking to India Today, sir. And that's a wrap on this bulletin. For the latest news and updates, you can log on to indiatoday.in. You can also download the India Today app. Thanks for watching.